saw them. Tell your neighbor, he saw them. Look at your other neighbor and say, he sees you. And the text says, he gave them instructions. Verse 14 says, when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. It's a simple instruction, don't you think? Go to the priest with your leprosy and your leprous condition. It's a simple direction that can be even translated for us today. Go to church. Go find the place of worship. Go find the priest. Go find the pastor. Now, now here's the key. You, you, you could not come to the priest back in that day until you were healed. So Jesus gave them instructions that defied common logic. They had leprosy, and they were not supposed to go until they were healed. Isn't that right? Until they got healed. But Jesus knew that if they just obeyed what he said, that by the time they got to the priest, oh, somebody's going to get this on the way home, they would be healed. Look at somebody and say, if you trust and obey, by the time you get where you're going, it's going to be all right. Come on, look at your other neighbor. That neighbor doesn't want to talk to you. Say, neighbor, if you but trust and obey, by the time you get to where you're going, it's going to be all right. Look at somebody and say, God can work it out if you let him. Come on, somebody help me in this house. By the time you get where you're going, I'm here to declare and decree. If you trust in the timing of God, God will make everything all right. I may not look like what I'm supposed to look like, but by the time I get to where I'm going, you better get a good look at me right now because when I get what God has for me and I get to where God wants me to be, you won't even recognize me. Somebody say hallelujah because I'll be healed. I'll be cleansed. I'll be set free. I dare you to follow the instructions of God. These people, these men, they dared to follow the instructions of God. Look at somebody and say, just do what the Lord says do. It'll be much easier on you if you trust and obey. There's an old song for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Come on, let's give God a shout of praise right there. I'm almost finished, the text says. And so it was, as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, somebody say one of them. When he saw that he was healed, he started looking at his hands and saw something different. As he was strutting along the way, he felt something different. Skin started to clear up. He said, wait a minute, wait one minute, wait, wait, wait one minute. I know I must go to the priest, but wait a minute. Somebody say, wait a minute. The priest didn't heal me. Let me go back and tell the Lord of mercy, the master. Let me go back and tell him thank you. I'm going to eventually get to the priest, but let me go back before I get too far down the road and have spiritual amnesia. Let me go back and tell the Lord, thank you. And some of us, while we on this journey, you know, after the Lord blesses, after the Lord heals, after the Lord delivers, never takes time out to go back and tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Listen, my brother, look this way, my sister, during this season of Thanksgiving, don't forget and don't develop amnesia. After all God has done for you, you know, some of y'all used to go to church on the regular, but now we ought to see you on the first and third Sunday. Come on, somebody help me. Some of y'all used to be involved in using your gifts to the glory of God. Elder, we got some choir members out there in the audience now that used to sing in the choir and serve and, and be involved in ministry. Not because a person of a person, not because somebody asked you to do it, but you did it because of what God did for you. Somebody say, man, if you think about all God has done for you, nobody ought to ask you to do anything around here. You ought to be willing to serve. You ought to be willing to use your gift. You ought to be willing to sing in the choir. Now, now you won't even give like you used to give. You won't even serve. You're too busy. 
to make the meetings. You don't have time to come to Bible study. Pastor, that just doesn't fit into my schedule. I can't stop what I'm doing and close out everything in my office to be at Bible study. You don't have time. What if Jesus didn't stop what he was doing? What if Jesus didn't close out his agenda to come and see about you? You wouldn't have no job. You wouldn't have that little piece of change in your pocket. Look at your neighbor and say, why you ain't saying nothing now? You wouldn't have nothing to ride in. But praise God, he's brought you from a mighty long way. And here you are sitting up in here Thanksgiving Sunday and you've got amnesia. You ought to give God some praise. Oh, y'all ain't going to like me in a few minutes. Y'all got 15 people clapping, but thank God for y'all. But now you don't have time. But you had time when you were in pain. Uh-huh. You had time when you were on the sick and shut-in list. You had time when you had all that drama in your life. Negro was going upside your head. You had time then. All right, I'm coming down your row. When you didn't have a job, you had time for the church. You were waiting outside for somebody to open the door. You had time when you didn't have any money in your pocket. Pastor, y'all got anything around there I could do? Any work at the car wash? No, we don't have any work at the car wash. But now you, that you've gotten what you need, you've forgotten all about God. But this man, somebody say, praise God for this one man. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I hope you're not in the nine. Yet this man, he came back. And the Bible says that in verse 15 that he worshiped God. And he just didn't worship him with a, with a milly mouth. But he worshiped him with a loud voice. Y'all know what a milly mouth is, don't you? Well, thank you. Hallelujah, glory. No, he said, thank you, Lord. I dare somebody to open your mouth even in this place today and begin to praise God with a loud voice. Not a milly mouth, but a loud voice. I doubt about 50 people who don't mind giving God praise to open your mouth and give God a shout of praise. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory to God. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Glory, God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me, how dare I hold back my praise? You got to stop worrying about what people are going to say. But go ahead and give him his due praise. He's worthy of all of our praise. As a matter of fact, he deserves our praise. And here's the clincher. He expects our praise. Look at your neighbor and say, he expects our praise. In light of all that God has done for you, he expects for you to at least open your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. Thank you for healing my body. Thank you for food on my table. Thank you for being clothed in my right mind. Thank you for looking beyond my faults and getting right to my needs. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody open your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. Come on, take your seat. I'm getting ready to finish. Look at verse 17, and I'm going to my seat. Now Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? My last point is this. Nine of them failed to return to give thanks. Maybe, just maybe, I don't know, they were caught up in trying to catch up with everything they had missed out on. I don't know. The nine, maybe they had a lot of people they needed to see that they hadn't seen in a while. Maybe they wanted to catch up on a lot of shopping and get some new clothes since Black Friday sales were still available. I don't know. Maybe they had a lot of cooking they needed to do. I don't know that they didn't have time to go back and tell the Lord thank you. As I thought about that, whatever happened to thank you? You know, if the truth be told, it's really a lost saying in our society. It's a lost saying in, in the society in which we live. 
people will take what you, what you do for them and they'll take it for granted. And act as if you owe, you ought to do it for them. And then they, they'll walk off and won't even say thank you. My, my parents used to tell, tell us growing up, and I'm sure some of y'all as well, make sure now when somebody gives you something, you say thank you. Make sure when you're talking to grown folk, you say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You say yes, sir, and no, sir. My little grandson say, uh, yeah. I say, you say what? He say, yes, sir, yes, sir. And we correct them. We, we, don't, we don't play that. We don't let them get away with that because, see, they're going to run up in society and try to pull that on the wrong person. But, you know, the simple words of thank you, it really sets you up for more blessings down the road. And if the truth be told, people are tired of people not appreciating what they do for them. Some of y'all are just stuck in a situation where you're tolerating it, but people get tired of that, of people not thanking them and appreciating them for what they do. And the Bible says the nine kept on going. They were considered what the old folk used to call back in the day ingrates. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Anybody ever heard that? I see one hand. Okay. Y'all don't know what ingrates? Okay, I see, I see you, Brother Jerry. They, are, they were ungrateful. And a whole lot of people in the house today, in the body of Christ, are ungrateful for what God has done. Don't let it be said during this season of Thanksgiving that you were a part of the nine. Don't let it be said that you didn't have time to tell the Lord thank you. How do I thank him other than just saying it on Sunday? Well, you thank him through your living. You thank him through your giving. You thank him through your service. You thank him through using your gifts to his glory. The Bible says the nine went their way. Kept their mouth shut, but not me. Tell your neighbor, not me. The nine kept on going. Look at your neighbor and say, but not me. Say, how about you? Are you willing, my brother, are you willing, my sister, to say, Lord, here am I? Head bowed, mouth open, grateful heart. And God, all I want to do is tell you thank you. And God, even today, it's my prayer that you forgive us for not saying thank you, for not giving you praise, for not opening our mouths and giving you praise. God, forgive us for the times we should have said thank you and we didn't. Have mercy on us because, God, you've been too good to us for us not to say thank you. God, we pray that you will help us even as we move through this week to be in an attitude and a gratitude of appreciation for all that you've done. And it doesn't matter what crowd we're around, they're going to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you love us and we love you. Now, come on, let's give the Lord one more shout of thanks and a shout of praise. Come on, stand to your feet. I'm done. Come on, somebody open your mouth and say, thank you, Lord. Somebody open your mouth and say, hallelujah. Somebody open your mouth and say, glory to God for all that you've done. Come on, extend yourselves across these aisles. Let it not be said that you were a part of the nine. Let it not be said during this season of Thanksgiving that you forgot and then go back to tell the Lord thank you. When I think of his goodness and all he's done for me, my soul immediately cries out. I can't keep it to myself. It's like fire, don't you see? That's shut up in my bones. I've got to tell the Lord thank you. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Father, we thank you for this day. We do thank you for our lives. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, for your long suffering toward us. We thank you, dear Lord, for sustaining us through all of the trials and the tribulations, and yes, even the drama that we had to endure through the sickness and 
the pain and all of the disease. But God, here we are. And God, we want to open our mouths and tell you thank you. Our heads are bowed and our hearts are grateful. Because God, you've been better to us than we've actually been to ourselves. Help us to be the one that will go back and let you know how much we appreciate all that you've done. God, we ask that you would yet strengthen the hand of the person that we're holding. We don't know their circumstance. We don't know their situation. But we do know that they have much to be thankful for. And so, God, give them an attitude of gratitude, even during this season of Thanksgiving. So we love you today. We honor you, and we will bless your name. So even as we move forward from this day forward, help us, oh God, to have gratitude in our hearts and appreciation in our minds and on our lips for all that you've done and doing and will do. It's in the name of Jesus, even the risen Christ, we pray. And those who love God said amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together and give God a praise. Come on, you can do it. Now give your neighbor a warm embrace and say, neighbor, don't forget to give God thanks. Hallelujah. The officers are coming to stand with me. Will you remain standing once you get back to your seat? A simple invitation extended today on this Thanksgiving Sunday. Just come and tell the Lord thanks after all he's done. If that's you today and you want to connect with the body of Christ called ATOP, be a part of the worshiping believers here at this place, and you're looking for a church home, once you come? Give me your hand and give God your heart. Listen, my brother, look this way, my sister. This is a great season to come in an attitude of surrender. I know you feel as if you've been rejected. I know you feel as if you've been an outcast. Nobody really knows your name, but God sees you. And he's concerned. He wants to show his compassion towards you and let you know that he loves you. And he loves you too much to leave you where you are. Is there somebody here who wants to come today? Won't you come? Give me your hand. You want to come rededicate your life? A good day to come. A good season to be in an attitude of rededication. Maybe there's somebody here who wants to make their first confession of faith. You've never been baptized. You've never accepted the Lord and Savior of your life. Come, give me your hand and give God your heart. And I tell you, you'll be on a new road to what God yet has in store. Maybe you just stand in need of prayer as this choir prepares to lead us. And you want somebody to yet pray with you through your situation and the circumstance that you find yourself in. Won't you come today? An attitude of gratitude. And watch God meet you even in this place today. Won't you come? Come on, let's go ahead and sing it together. My hallelujah belongs to you. Let's sing. My hallelujah belongs. Belongs to Come on, somebody sing it, ain't talk. Hallelujah belongs to you. We come just to say hallelujah, God, it belongs to you. Hallelujah belongs to you. Come on, ain't top. Let's tell them what it is. Say you deserve it. You deserve it. Hallelujah. You deserve Just to say, you deserve. Come on, let me hear you say, all of the glory, all of the glory belongs because you. you're the God that can heal. Hallelujah! All of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. Somebody say, all of the glory, all of the glory belongs. Lift your voice, everybody. Lift your hands and say, God, 
you deserve you deserve we come back just to say you deserve Now, come on, open your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Say, thank you, Lord. Tell the Lord, thank you. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated in the very presence of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. And he deserves all of the honor. And he deserves all of our praise. For if it had not been for the Lord on our sides, Somebody in this place, tell me, where would we be? Somebody say amen. Well, even as we prepare for a time of giving, we know that God loves a generous giver, a hilarious giver. The officers are coming again as we prepare to give of our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. And I hope and pray that during this Thanksgiving season, that you express your thanks through giving, giving of your time, your talents, giving of your resources to God. And I declare and decree that if you but yet trust the timing of God in your situation, that God will come and see about you. How many of you believe that? If we but yet trust and obey, God will handle our situation. So even as we prepare to give, get your gifts in your hand. Those of you who are giving electronically today, there's information on the screen that will direct you to a secure site to give today. And those who are watching live streaming, if uh, we certainly, first of all, appreciate you viewing this particular worship experience. And if you feel a need to give today, you also have a directive on the screen that will send you to a secure site. And we're certainly grateful for you being a part of this worship experience. And we look forward to seeing you at ATOP when you're in the area. Or we'll see you next Sunday, same time. Somebody say amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, you can do it. Give him praise right there. That's right. Well, let's stand to our feet as we prepare now 
to receive our gifts. I'm going to ask Lady Kim to lead us in a word of prayer over the offering as we prepare to give today. For God has truly been good to us. God, we thank you today. And we stand here, oh God, with thanksgiving on our lips, thanksgiving in our hearts and on our minds. And God, we say thanks through giving. We ask, oh God, that you take these gifts that we are giving on today. For you said, oh God, that if we trust you in the tide, that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive it. So we give your word back to you today, God. Some of us, God, are going to give of our tithe, but we don't know how to make ends, how our ends are going to meet this month. But God, we're going to be faithful over the few that you've given us. And you said that you would make us ruler over many. So we commit our tithe to you and our offering to you, knowing, oh God, that the windows shall be open and we shall be blessed. God, we thank you and we bless you and we honor you for the gifts. We thank you, O oh God, for the ability to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just remain standing all over the building and follow the instruction of the ushers as you prepare to come and give your tithes and offerings. The two outside baskets today will be for the tithe. The two inside baskets will be for our benevolent fund.